Hi, it's Scott Blakely here from Blakely Bassoon Studios and Lil Ass Kickers Bassoon Reads. Welcome to the third of my three-part video series in how I've used power tools to make bassoon reads. Power tools, power tools, making reads with the power tools. Power tools, why they're so cool, bassoon reads with the power tools. And guess what? I saved the most obvious video for last. When it comes to reaming, the use of a power drill seems pretty f***ing obvious. I, I don't understand why I've never seen someone do this before. I know, I know plenty of other people out there do this. I never saw any of my teachers do this. I certainly get that it's useful to have a hand reamer for, you know, any little adjustments you might have to make when you're on the go or giving a lesson. But when I'm making reads, when I'm making, you know, 20 or 30 blanks at a time, especially, uh, this is, this is really annoying to do. And there's no, there's no real drawback to this as long as you do it right. I got my reamer tip from Nexus Woodwind Supply. You could just buy a reamer and, you know, hack away to do what you need to do to get this out of there. I do think it's very important to note that you should have your torque set all the way to one because with reaming by hand or reaming with a, with a power tool you know you don't want too much force twisting in there and causing the blades to slip or or warp i also want to mention that i ream wet i don't think it's a life and death sort of controversy whether we should ream wet or whether we should ream dry there's some advantages to reaming dry it definitely seems to give you a sort of cleaner cut the issue that I have is that the cane will then swell. And so I'll either have to ream again or I'll have to basically ream a lot deeper under with the assumption that this cane's going to swell. So I've got my torque adjustment all the way on one to make so that hopefully I won't put too much twisting on it. Another thing that I will usually do before I ream is I'll just tighten my wires one more time. Again, because I... I don't like my blades to slip. Some people slip their blades on purpose. Some people slip their blades on accident. I, I try I try to avoid it. It's not necessarily the end of the world when it happens. And the other thing you'll notice is I haven't cut the tip. If you're going to do a lot of reaming, it's so much better to leave the tip uncut for the ream because, again, it just... You've got a counterforce against all that torque that's going on inside. I want to make sure I emphasize the importance of having a stopper or at the very least a marking on your reamer tip when using a power drill. Otherwise, it's very easy to go too far. One more thing. For style and function, I like to wear a glove to protect my hands from the wires. And as you can see, I didn't clean my desk for this portion of the video. Let's ream. The spiral reamer that I have, by the way, only cuts, you know, when it's going clockwise. But I do turn it counterclockwise when I'm coming out just to balance off any pressure. What I will typically then do is after I've reamed, you know, I can just do a couple reads real fast. See how fast that is? And the, the, the thing about it is because this is spinning so fast, I don't have to push the reamer in very hard. So I'm actually being less forceful than I would with a hand reamer and, and a lot faster. Ream with power! I also keep a little toothbrush nearby to keep things clean. Whoops, did you see that? Wear a damn glove! See, I lost a grip. That would have uh, really cut up my hand. Whoops! I don't want to get sued because someone ripped the skin off their hand making a bassoon read. Okay, 
That's that. Let's take this Dreamer tip off. For decades, I didn't bother with a Diamond Dreamer. I'm still not... I'm still not convinced a Diamond Dreamer is that important. At least on 95% of the reads that I make. However, when reaming is this easy, why the f*** not? What I will do, since the Diamond Dreamer doesn't have to go in, in any particular direction, I will run the Diamond Dreamer counterclockwise. That's just to sort of help, again, counter any force that may have happened when I was reaming with the Spiral Dreamer. Reaming with power! <sighs> Give it a little blow. And... Now that's, that's reamed real nice. Once again, it's important to keep these things clean. I don't typically bother with using, uh, you know, there's a medium and a fine grit. I honestly think that either of them is gonna make the tube smooth enough. Like I said, I don't even necessarily use a diamond reamer on all my reeds. I've only started doing it more regularly just because it's, it helps me counter the torque that I put into the reed with the, the spiral reamer. But some people advocate, you know, for all these different stages of like, use a spiral reamer, then a fluted reamer, then a, a couple different diamond reamers. That, that seems like overkill in my opinion, but what do I know? Okay, I'm gonna ream the rest of these now without the camera. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know I'm gonna enjoy it when you like, subscribe, and share it. Yeah! Power tools, power tools, making reads with the power tools. Power tools, why they're so cool. Bassoon reads with the power tools.